Hello folks and welcome to the channel or welcome back and in this episode we're going to be looking at a very common problem with the TD5 engine and that is oil creep into the ECU. And believe it or not, but oil will eventually creep up over the wiring loom into your ECU. And if that happens, you will have all kinds of issues. And eventually, when it gets so severe, oil will get inside the ECU, and then you are really in trouble because your ECU will be toast and you will have to replace it. Not a very pleasant situation. However, you can prevent it. I'm going to show you on how you can identify if you have oil creep into the ECU or not what is the cause of it and how you can fix it. So let us have a look what is causing this problem. And that is caused by a worn out injector harness seal. What I have here is a new injector harness and you can see all these connectors. There are five of them. They are plugged into the injectors. And this is actually the connector that is feeding through that cover and you seal the seals here, but inside you have some very small pins, connectors, where these wires are coming through. And it's actually through that seal inside that we're having actually a leak um, and oil is creeping through. So now the question is, how do you know if your Defender has that problem or not? Well, to be honest, TD5s have been around for a long time and they haven't been built since, what, seven, eight years, maybe even more, maybe even 12 years. So the likelihood that you have that problem is very high. Now, there's a couple of places you can check it. You can take off the uh, sound cover on the engine and then look in the front, and we'll do that in a second. And you can look inside the passenger's area underneath the right seat, and there you find the ECU on a Defender TD5. If you have a Disco, it's somewhere else, but it's the same principle. And then check on the red connector and see if it's oily or not. And if it is, well, then you know you have the problem. I know on mine, I have the problem. So let's start with removing the cover. Removing the cover is easy. You've got a, about three bolts and you remove them with a 30 millimeter wrench. There's two bolts on this side, there's one bolt on the other side. And once you've done that, you can actually lift that up um, and it should come off fairly easy. So the first spot to check is the connector right here and the cabling and see if this cabling is actually greasy or not. And, and mine is actually greasy. I can see it, I can feel it. That connector connects to the plug that I showed you before of the injector hardness, which is inside the cylinder head cover. So if we're going to replace it, we'll have to take the cylinder head cover off with a couple of bolts. And if you do so, you will have to have a new seal for that because you should never place the old seal back. So let's see if I can disconnect this guy. And you need to squeeze the connector and then it should come off. And it came off. And look, have a look. Hopefully you can see it, right? You see the oil there? That is the problem. Look at this stuff here, how oily that is. That's all oil that's on it. So for sure I have the problem. So if you do the same on your Defender and you see oil even here, then yes, uh, you do have a problem and you should replace things. Really uh, replace this connector, but I'm just gonna spray it with some brake cleaning fluid. So I take at least most of the grease or oil out of it, blow it dry as well. I mean, you can see the oil coming out of this, right? This is really bad. All right. One more time. And I think we should be all right by now. All right. So under the right-hand side, passenger or driver's seat, it depends a bit if it's left-hand drive or right-hand drive, uh, you find on a Defender, your ECU, and here is the ECU, and you have two plugs on it, the red one and the black one. And the red one is the one that is feeding the injectors. So you should check on these cables if they are greasy. And uh, yeah, mine are pretty greasy. Um, what can I say? I knew that. So I have already oil creep up to um, my plug here. So then the best thing to do is to remove the plug and check um, if it's even in sight. So let's see if we can do this. Uh, all right, 
So, let's see. Uh, and let me look in sight. Oh my God, this is really bad in sight. Uh, how can I show you that? Um, wow. I just hope I have no oil inside the ECU yet. I took the ECU out of the car so I can actually show you what the issue is. It's only bolted down with three bolts, so that's very quick. Now the red connector, that's the one uh, which having the leads, uh, which is going to the injector harness. And look at the bottom here, all this oil, look at this. I've got lots of oil in there, so if you don't believe me that you have oil creep, well, here it is. This is the evidence that it does creep along the wiring loom into your ECU. Now, I don't know if I have an issue inside the ECU or not, uh, therefore I will have to open it up and see. I don't think so looking at the connectors, but then again, I might have to do that. So I'm going to clean this out again with brake cleaner and then blow it dry and I will try to open up the ECU itself if I can and um, see what the damage is inside. So I cleaned up both connectors now, the oil is gone and the red connector is the one that had the oil on it because that's where the uh, harness is on for the injectors and that's how the oil was creeping in. I haven't been able to look inside because the unit is sealed. I was hoping I could get it off but I couldn't and I don't want to force it. So I'm going to take my chances with it, especially since I have checked the issue with my Nanocom. I didn't see no errors, so I think it's still all right. But it was pretty close of getting inside my ECU. So now uh, I'm going to put it back in um, and then um, we'll install the um, new harness for the injectors. And by the way, I also cleaned the mating connectors inside um, the uh, passenger's cabin. Um, I couldn't show you that because it's hard to film, but it's the same principle. Spray it all with brake cleaner until all the oil is gone and then blow it dry with compressed air. That always works fine. Um, on this side, when you do it here, don't blow straight into it with your air compressor. Blow from the side. You don't want to blow too much inside the ECU unit. All right, so um, let me put it back. The next thing we need to do now is uh, to replace the injector hardness inside this cover here and therefore we have to remove it and this is what we call the cylinder head cover and there's 13 bolts on this one all around so and do all these uh, not those but these and this breathing hose and then we can lift it up and uh, you will have to have a new seal for this uh, if you're going to put it back so let me start unbolting this and then I'll show you but I'm going to start with removing this uh, breathing hose here and this looks like a pretty heavy uh, hose, but it should work. There you go. Kind of remove it because this stuff has been on it for a while and it can be tough to get it off. Right? Okay, so. So these uh, little bolts are, is an eight millimeter. And once you put it back, I think it's 10 Newton meters that you need to tighten it down with. And I always keep my bolts in a bucket. It's always handy so I don't lose them. All the 13 bolts are removed, so now I should be able to get it off. Before you take the cover off, you also have to undo this rear panel here. There's two little bolts that hold it in place. Not very complicated, but otherwise, if you don't do this, you won't get it off. Now that should come off. So you don't want to get any debris inside. So before you take off the cover, make sure that everything all around it is clean. And before we're going to put back the cover, we also clean up all the edges here. You can see the injector harness sitting right here. And um, I'm going to disconnect it. You just squeeze these pins and pull it off. You want to make sure that you get no debris inside. That would not be very good. All right, and the last one. And then the last part, well, that's just pulling it up and I might need a screwdriver underneath to lift it. Oh, it's been in there for a while, so it can be a little bit tough to get it out. And here it is, so. So now I'm gonna put back the uh, new wiring loom, but I'm gonna oil a little bit, a little bit, the um, seals here. Not a lot, just a little bit, right? Okay. Okay, so let's see if you can get that in there. Make 
shouldn't be all that difficult. There we go. And make sure it's fully in. Uh, and now we just reconnect uh, the injectors and you can't really miss because they're all keyed. Try to hold it in place a bit, but the cover will keep it in place, so we don't need to worry too much about this. All right, and that's it. Double check if everything is properly seated. Everything is. So now we can put back the cover, but before we do so, we will need to have a new seal on the cover. So now it's time to remove the old gasket and put a new one up. And I have two types. Uh, this is the first one that I have. It's a ER7094. And there's another model for a older Defender. So you gotta watch out for what Defender you're having it. And in my case, it's a 2002. So I'm gonna need actually this uh, 794 gasket. And I think that will just fit and it's going on like this. So let's see and remove first of all the old one and then we'll see if we can fit the uh, new one. We need to be careful that these bushes don't fall out. Oops, one fell out. Let me just try to put that back in. Interesting. This one is not holding. Okay. And one more fell out. Okay. Here we go. Now well, let's see if this is the one, and it sure is. Now I know some people put the old gasket back up. Uh, I don't like to do that because most of the time you're going to get leaks, oil leaks. I don't want to have that, do we? All right, so I think the gasket is now properly fitted. So let's put it up and see if we can get it fitted properly. There is one area you got to pay attention to, and that's all the way at the end. That is, uh, that looks like it's fitted right. What you saw me doing in the back was checking for that little um, notch here. You see that? This part here. Now, on one of the seals that I had, or the gaskets. Um, it is a small one, and that must have been for the old model of the TD5. And as of 2002, I think it is, uh, you got the seal with a notch which is bigger. All right, so now it's time to bolt it down, and to bolt them all down, you go in sequence, and you bolt them down to about 10 Newton meters, and that should be perfect for that. Then we close up the back, and then we hook back up the uh, cable in the front, and then hopefully, it starts and the problem is solved. So I've put all the bolts up and slightly tightened them up and uh, now it's time to put them to torque which is about uh, 10 Newton meters or seven pound feet. And I'm not gonna torque it down to the final torque immediately. Just go around, that was one. That's one. All right.
And now I, I just got to make sure that the connector is on properly, and it is. And we'll reconnect the hose. Okay, so everything is now connected. Everything is locked up and tied down. So now we can put the insulation cover up and then see if it runs. Now I have to take this back off somewhere next week anyway, because um, I still want to do some work on the EGR valve. So let's see if we can crank up this baby and if it runs properly. And then we'll check for some leaks and then we should be done. Well, I think that's running quite nice. So folks, we are at the end of this video and as you could see, this was not very complicated and it can save you a lot of trouble. So I hope you enjoyed it and um, I'll see you in my next video. Bye bye.